the well, it looks like uh, <clears throat> Coach Stoll found some old fireworks stuffed away from. Uh, we buy so many fireworks to win after the game, you know, we didn't win enough at home, so we had to use them all tonight. But that was sure a nice tribute. And, uh, and uh, golly, you know, we played so well on special teams all year, and then to get beat with a kickoff return was just. And a couple of them, they, it was just wasn't one. It was a, you know, a two or three. And and Jeff Banks, our special teams coach, is the best special teams coach I've ever been around. You ask any of these players, he is awesome. Uh, uh, Got to do everything we can to keep him here at UTEP because uh, he's going to get a big time job at a big time school or in the pros. Uh, he's that good and. I, and I know that he's disappointed and, and feels horrible about the way that, that that game ended. But, man, he's done it. Until this game, we've been just super at that. When did the finality of it all settle, settle in? Uh, well, certainly not when it was six minutes to go in fourth and 14. I, I thought we could, you know, the guy just dropped a punt before. If I had to do that again, I probably would have just thrown it up down in there. But... Uh, uh, we thought we could stop them and, and uh, you know, uh, score some score. So that kind of ticked me off that I decided to do that. <coughs> but the results weren't very good up until then. You know, was, that's how we got to be fourth and 14. And we got uh, sacked and didn't complete some passes. But because the guys were running open, we just couldn't get the ball in. about the quarterback rotation? Okay, well, first of all, I... I um, Try to keep you from knowing that, Brett. Uh, disguising it in practice because you got eagle eyes for all that kind of stuff over here. But what we wanted to do, I didn't, I did not think that Rice would be preparing for Nick Lamison or to throw the football early in the game. Um, they were, they, they scrimmaged and practiced all week the read zone with the quarterback running and the quarterback load and the quarterback counter and the uh, quarterback ISO and all the plays that we'd put in for Blair. And so uh, I thought, what the hell, you know, uh, uh, let's go up for it with Nick and throw the ball deep. And uh, so right off, the, right off the bat, we threw some deep passes in the first quarter and, and uh, didn't hit on all of them, but uh, uh, definitely went for it. And then uh, my plan was to, at halftime, if we were ahead, uh, to go with Blair and run the ball against him. Because I know over there in that locker room, they're talking about the pass plays that we did and how they're going to put a rat rush on it and how they're going to uh, try to uh, get uh, a rush on Lamison. So we made the switch then because of that. It was a hunch. I went with it. didn't work. But um, uh, Blair did come into the game, and we did move the ball and, and uh, got some first downs with him, and he made you know some, some nice throws. And, uh, and then he sp uh, sprained his ankle and broke his nose. And... Uh, so little excuses like that, you know. Uh, but uh, he didn't want to. He wanted to play, but you know, run four steps for me without limping, and, and uh, so he had a sore ankle. So as the game, when they scored that touchdown, you know, then I thought, well, we're going to be probably throwing a lot uh, with Nick, and uh, he throws the ball a little bit better than Blair, and so and Blair is is only. You know, he's real good when he can run. That's the best thing he does. So, um, sorry I didn't get Carson in the game, but Carson's a is a true winner, and and uh, it's going to be a good competitive battle at that quarterback position. Coach, how would you like people to remember your legacy here at UTEP? Oh, I don't know. I guess uh, just how it how it is. You know, how it was is I think we. Uh, Got our expectations higher, raised the expectation level of the program, and uh, recruited people that you're going to uh, appreciate to have in your community uh, that you'll employ. And uh, I appreciate this uh, this chance more than you guys will ever know. It was great for my family, great for our relationship. All my kids came with me, you know, my daughter and the two boys and all the grandkids. So it was a it was there was a, a different reason. It wasn't just to come and be a football coach for this community. It was good for the Price family, and uh, um, I guess maybe just that the Price family was good for El Paso.
because, man, El Paso has been good for us. What are you going to miss most about it? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Um, everyone tells me probably the companionship you have with the, with the players and the coaches and the fun you have. Um, I, well, I'm just going to sit back. We want to do something, and uh, Joyce and I want to do something in some type of volunteer charity work or something like that. But we're going to just kind of go away for maybe a couple months and, and just relax and think about it. That's the advice that I've gotten from uh, tons of people who are just so honored that have called me and and uh, and talked to me and, and said uh, nice things to me over this time. I can't even I couldn't return all the phone calls. I'll be doing that next week. Defense uh, kind of struggle. Defense struggle. We were we weren't tackling well. We were hitting them high. Those guys are big, strong dudes. The running backs were. And we needed to tackle them better around the waist and the legs, which we, I thought we corrected that at halftime. Uh, the, the, a couple of the last drives were, you know, weren't good. But that third quarter, we came out and we're doing the, the right thing. And just keep them in front. Don't give them a big play, but wrap them up better. And uh, uh, disappointed in the first half, we didn't get us didn't get something going after that fumble. After they fumbled, after they drove down, and then they fumbled, and and, uh, and kind of the wind. Kind of got on our sales when they returned that kickoff. There's no, no, no question about that. Coach, looking into next season, what would you say your analysis would be the biggest area of improvement that this UTEP team needs to make, and where is it the strongest? Well, I think we're going to to make some improvements in our schedule. It's going to be a a, a, a little bit uh, less uh, competitive. Uh, Nothing wrong with new blood. There's nothing. I want Andre Patterson to get this job. But there's nothing wrong with new blood, and there's nothing wrong with change. Our players, I told them, they're going to have to embrace change. The only thing that we all know about the future is it's not going to be the same. Today ain't the same as yesterday, and yesterday, and tomorrow won't be the same as today. So it's going to be different. So just embrace it, guys. And, and, uh, and you know, they're all doing well. All of our players are doing well in school. And... Bob Stoll is going to make the right decision as, as uh, who uh, replace, uh, replaces me. I've got to be his worst choice he's made in the last 10 years. As a, he does a pretty good job with basketball coaches. <laughs> coach, Makes them you, millionaires. What was your most memorable experience as the UTEP head coach over these last nine years? Well, I would say, that I would say unquestionably the first time I got the job, it meant so much to me uh, that day that I got it. And... Uh, uh, like I told Doc Sadler, you know that's the best day of, of of your of your career is that first day when you get the job. And Doc, I said, then it's all downhill from there. <laughs> Slowly, one day after another. Most pleasant surprise about your YouTube experience off the top of your head. The most surprising thing about. Uh, I just think that this is a special place, and I think it's because of the people and the culture and the community and the way that we are. You know, uh, 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 sometimes I don't, I'm not sure if Texas really wants us. Uh, we don't want Mexico. I know New Mexico doesn't want us. I know Arizona doesn't want us. We're kind of like Kuwait. It's <laughs> <laughs> kind of stuck out there. Without the oil. Without yeah, the oil. without the oil. But, but uh, you know, and it's... It's a great place, and I don't give a damn if anybody doesn't want us. You know, it's, it's you know El Paso. Have you been to El Paso? Yeah. Have you been to El Paso? Wait till you wait till you live here, then you'll change your mind. Don't you look like you had a nice moment when Aaron came over and helped? Yeah, with my wife. Yeah. First time my wife has ever been on the field. We've been there for forty six wow. years. She's never been on the football field with me. And I brought her in the locker room. First time she's ever been in the locker room. So uh, that was, uh, some wives are down there, you know, with the coaches and stuff, but it was a huge surprise to me on the sidelines. And that emotionally was a little tough to take there. And the, gee, the video, I, I didn't see that until after the game, you know, that, that video was, was, uh, was very, very nice. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, all of you guys. You've been great to work with. And appreciate your patience. and. Uh, and uh, nobody has an agenda. You don't have the egos. You just you report what you see. And damn it, sometimes you.
Doesn't sound good to me. <laughs> Hell, I said, well, Brett must have been at the game. 